Jan Oberg is founder of Transnational.Live, joins us from Lund, Sweden. We also have Christoph Horstel, who's an author and politician, joining us from Berlin. Welcome to you both. Jan Joberg, let me first uh, start with you. So uh, you have two different uh, viewpoints here. One from NATO and Finland, how they are hailing this, uh, the NATO Secretary General calling this a historic accession, but you have Russia who has said, uh, no, this is going to um, risk more conflict. How do you see it? The basic line is... This is for Jan Oberg. I'm sorry, Christoph Orst, I'll get to you. Go ahead. Jan Oberg. Thank you. The basic line is the continuous Western propaganda that uh, the Russian invasion in Ukraine was unprovoked. The truth is, Russia is being provoked since 2004. 2014 was already the second CIA-organized coup d'etat in Ukraine. And afterwards, the killing of the Russian people in Donbas started. So what we have, in fact, is a very well orchestrated CIA provocation uh, of Russia. And in the last uh, moments, you know, there were two items which, in fact, forced Russia uh, to invade. And one was the nuclear threat of President Zelensky issued on 19 February 2022 in the Munich Security Conference when he stated to the applause of many NATO listeners that he would no longer uh, abide by the contract of Budapest from 1994, which clearly said that Ukraine should not acquire nuclear weapons. And he threatened, in fact, indirectly to build them now, and Ukraine can do that. That is one point. The other point was the provocation of uh, more than 1,400 breaches of the Minsk II Accord in Donbas with artillery attacks on the civilian people. And President Putin was not allowed, in fact, to, you know, not react uh, to these two threats. Otherwise, he would have lost his job, I'm pretty sure. This was not something negligible. So this is the real situation. NATO is lying all the time. And poor Finland, Finland right now has more than doubled the NATO border with Russia, a very unwise decision. And at the same time, they bought 60 new fighter jets, F-35, from the U.S., and that means there's corruption going on in Finland, terrible corruption, same as in Germany. Okay. Jan Oberg, now you can go ahead. Yes, no, I think that, that the NATO expansion is a big thing that the West does not want to talk about. That does not legitimate, in my view, the military invasion or the war on Ukraine. But what we have to do is to talk about... Uh, why would it be necessary for Sweden and Finland to join? And let me tell you, living in Sweden, that this has been going on, this um, approach to security has been going on for decades. And both countries long ago left behind their idea of neutrality, of non-alignment, of being mediators, of balancing between the parties, of being buffer zones, etc. They're now both selling out completely everything that has served them well over so many decades earlier. And they are reducing the security of their people, in my view. And I've worked with these issues for about 45 years. And secondly, they are going to have no independent foreign and security policy because, like other NATO countries, they will be under the guidance of uh, Washington. They will have probably to participate in international NATO or U.S. missions. They will have to accept pre-positioning of weapons in Finland and Sweden. They will have to coordinate everything they do with the West. And all that you do at a moment where any fool who follows global politics and world order change can see that the West is declining and the U.S. and its empire distant to fall, and we're going to create a multipolar cooperative world. Now, we are sitting, these two countries are now sitting with the rest in the restaurant of Titanic. Uh, so when you take a look at the whole uh, NATO doctrine, um, uh, Christoph, if I, if I may ask you, it, its existence is based on conflict, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, they can say security. But isn't the idea of this uh, mem membership that is, uh, now Finland has acceded to, 
uh, based on the fact that uh, perhaps the U.S. is uh, portraying Russia to be such a, uh, an offensive risk that uh, they needed to do that. And that's just uh, based on falsities where it was Russia that was being, um, that it was NATO that was inching closer to Russia, therefore NATO be uh, was, is the risk. So it's a false narrative that the U.S. is selling um, or NATO is selling to any country that wants to join NATO. So we have the problem that NATO was in fact installed officially to be a defensive uh, alliance. And this in fact has been proved a very dirty lie. And what happens now is that during decades, as my colleague just very rightly uh, pointed out, in fact, there was some kind of, you know, subvertive action against both countries to give up on their time proven neutrality. And with Finland, this is especially crazy because Finland had a very, you know, world famous neutrality. I'm a victim, I'm a, um, how to say, a witness of this. Uh, when I sold my Afghanistan war footage from when the Soviet Union was in Afghanistan to Finland, they dared to show that. And the German TV networks, they did not dare to show that. So that was very interesting. Uh, Finland did that. They have a lot of courage and it is so sorry what happened to them in the last decade, especially uh, when they went on to that course to, you know, um, join NATO, which is really a very, very bad moment of time. And of course, what the Finnish don't understand is from now on, they have to obey NATO Washington orders. It's not NATO, it's Washington they have to obey. Mm, and that is something the Finnish, in fact, don't lie. And I'm afraid uh, too late they will wake up and see what a terrible mistake they have done. Uh, one of the points that you touched on, uh, which is very important, is the geopolitical shift that's happening. And it's already in motion there, uh, Jan Oberg. And uh, we can see the alignments that are taking place. Again, something that has been in motion for some time. Why doesn't Finland uh, or, any, or Sweden or any other country see that happening, which involves at uh, the core the decline of the U.S.? Well, they would have been able to see it if what has happened, if what has happened the last 20, 30 years had not happened, namely an intellectual disarmament coupled with military rearmament. There's no doubt in my mind, and I've worked both with the Danish government and the Swedish government uh, once upon a time in my life, there were intellectuals. There were very good speechwriters. There were serious analysts. There was an openness to other views than their own. At this moment, all this consultancy expertise, the serious foundation of security politics has ended up being Twitter statements by, by people who know nothing like Sanna Marin in Finland and others who have probably never read a book about security not at all about peace or conflict resolution and do not respect the NATO Charter and do not respect the UN Charter, which is basically the same thing except for paragraph five. So for them, there is no discussion. The same applies to the Danish politics at the moment. There's no alternative. They don't see anything and the media don't cover anything beyond the 15% of the people who happen to live in what we call the Western world. They're not aware of the bigger world and what is changing out there. And if they are, the only thing they are putting up, putting a break on that development with is sanctions, militarism, armament, exclusion, cancellation, threats of war. And you can see that against Iran, you can see that against uh, Russia, you can see that against China. NATO does not do analysis anymore. It postulates that China is a formidable challenge. And therefore, we have the, the war on, okay. on, on Russia to, to weaken Russia in order to be able to turn the Western world against China. I tell you, we won't be able to do that. And God forbid that people will keep on trying to. Thank you for that. Jan Oberg, founder of Transnational uh, Dot Live from Lund, Sweden. Christoph Horstel author and politician from Berlin. Thank you to you both. And with that, we come to an end for this edition of the News Review. Thanks for tuning in.